All right. So on Saturday, I was talking to my neighbor. She was sitting in the backyard and I was in my backyard. Just came back from a nice walk without a mask. Just to be clear, because you don't have to listen to my videos, but you should know I do not wear a mask. And I'll tell you why. But I was talking to my neighbor and she is on the other side of the property and there was a fence between us. One of these wire fence, you know, kind of, you know, diagonal lines, metal mesh. Uh, it's not a mesh, but it's a fence. Uh, <clears throat> so I said to her, Mrs. K, Mrs. K, do you think this fence will prevent a mosquito from going through? <clears throat> she looked at me like, am I making any sense? <laughs> And I am asking you, are you making any sense? Because if you think about a mosquito going through a metal fence, a wire fence, it's, it's preposterous to think a mosquito can't get through. Do you think the mosquito is gonna go straight bumping into the metal of the fence, of the little wire? What's gonna go in between? It's so big. I'm gonna bust a bubble right now. If you're wearing a mask and you're doing this because you think you're being so kind, not to yourself, because you're not scared. You're doing it for other people to protect them because you're a good person. Look, I was there. I also made myself special masks, non-woven material, everything you can imagine, covering everything. When I would talk, the material would suck into my mouth. There was no air, nothing was getting through. <clears throat> of course, I couldn't breathe very well either. But that's besides the point. Because when you're trying to be good to other people, who cares if you can breathe or not? The main thing is that you're not endangering your neighbor, right? But let me talk about this. The size of a cloth, the size of a cloth is the pore size, in other words, in between the little threads of material that make up the cloth. The size range between 20 to 100 micron. The COVID virus, because it's a virus, it's not a bacteria, okay? A bacteria you can see through a microscope. A virus you cannot see through the microscope. You need a very specific, high level, uh, not regular microscope to even be able to see a virus if you know what you're looking for. Because most people can see things, they don't even know what they're looking for. If you know what you're looking for and you have this special um, light, um, 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 microscope, which is a very high power microscope, you will know a virus is 200 to a thousand times smaller than the hole in between the fiber of your material. 200 to a thousand times smaller. Did anybody tell you that? So a virus is 0 0.1, 0 0.1 micron. It'll go through any cloth. I don't care how many layers you put in. So I heard somebody say something really interesting because they want to make you feel like, yeah, maybe it will go through, maybe not. And, you know, how can you compare it? Because some people are trying to be honest and they know that the virus will go through, but they're trying to tell you why you should still wear a mask even though it's gonna go through anyway. 
So he said, it's like going, a narrow going through a forest. At some point, somewhere, they'll hit a tree. Let me tell you, before he hits a tree, it's going to come back to you. If he hits a tree, means if he hits your cloth, it means it's staying on your cloth. And there's so much germ on that cloth, you don't want it. Listen, if I would tell you to take an old piece of mattress, an old mattress, and put it in a room where it's been raining, humidity, nonstop, and it's going on like that day after day, you know what's going to happen? It's going to get moldy. And it's going to develop a lot of bad stuff for you, right? You wouldn't want to sleep on that bed, on that mattress, would you? Well, that's what you're doing when you're wearing a mask. All your breath, the humidity, the vapor, everything is getting stuck on that mask. Do you know that when doctors wear a mask, they have to change it every two hours? Because it catches everything. Do you know that if you put the mask in your purse, your mask is useless already? Do you know that these are disposable masks and you're supposed to put them in the trash every time you use it? And if you're wearing a bandana, I think it's wonderful. It's cowboy style. In Western culture, bandanas are great. They're fun. Why not? But they're not doing anything, not for you and not for other people regarding the virus. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So I go around without a mask. Nobody cares. A lot of people know it's just baloney. They're only wearing a mask because they've been told by the employer to wear a mask because they have to, to look good. Because everybody's been told to be good. Guess what? Not being good. Just trying to keep your job. You're not being protected with this mask situation. Virus are so numerous and you have so many in your body yourself. You'd be shocked how many you have. You'd be absolutely shocked. You have more viruses and bacteria than cells. So, if you want to pretend and if you want to live in La La Land, wear a mask, but don't tell other people to do that. Like I said to someone else, you're wearing a mask to protect yourself from the virus. How about your eyes? That's a way of getting contaminated. How about your ears? Do you want to wear earmuffs? It's useless. You cannot stop a virus. You have to develop an immune system or you have to take medication to prevent the virus from doing its damage. And as I said, most people have no symptoms. They're fine. They're just fine. I just talked to someone the other day. Yes, he's being diagnosed. His wife also, his kids also. And they're doing fine. Everybody's fine. They're positive. That's all. So many people have that. Why are you getting scared? Because you've heard people die. Well, I already made a video about why people died. Because they've been murdered. So, the media wants you to wear a mask. And the media has been bombarding you for months and months and months. And that's the thing that worries me is the psychological effect because after a while of hearing the same thing over and over again, you're starting, it's not you're starting, you just be brainwashed whether you want it or not. Because whether I want it or not, every time I open my computer, every time I open my phone, I'm being asked if I want more information about the coronavirus. I don't want their information. But they want me to go on that side to get scared again. 
to see anything that they want me to know. It's called brainwashing. It's called propaganda. And I'm against it. Nevertheless, people with the agenda of you being scared want you to wear a mask. And in case you're not going on the website of the coronavirus anymore, you'll still be reminded of this virus every single second you go out from every single person you meet that is hiding behind their mask, thinking they're being good. I would say they're being stupid, but I'm not gonna say that. I'm just gonna say they've been uneducated and they haven't gotten their knowledge together. I don't blame them, maybe they have other things to do. And I don't mind if that's what they wanna believe. Because remember, it used to be that ad that used to run on the bus. God forbid you should be among the 5%. Do you remember that ad? They figured out only 5% of people are thinking, God forbid you should be among this five, just go on Netflix and on TV and watch your videos and all that stuff. That's it. This is too important not to think about. And I don't think that the more educated um, and the more scholarly people are, the more they are looking into the situation. The media wants you to believe that you should be wearing a mask, that somehow you're saving lives when the epidemic is dying anyway, because that's what virus do, they come and they go. Even if you wouldn't do anything, they come and they go. Did you know they found out that the people that stayed home got more sick than the people that went out? And these poor people that stayed home and got sick, they racking their brain trying to figure out how in the world the virus got in their house. Because viruses are everywhere. Because if you did not eat for three months and you starved yourself to death and now you're dead, you don't have to think about the virus. But if you ate anything, that food has been touched by people. That food has been going around. And there's as much virus and bacteria on food than anything else. People were afraid to open their windows because they think the virus is coming in. Guess what? Even if you don't, the virus will get in. And you're better off opening your window and having fresh air. That's, that's bad for the virus. That kills it. Anyway, so most people, most reliable medical journal understand and admit that the purpose of the mask is to calm people's anxiety and to give the impression to people that they're actually doing something beneficial to stop this epidemic. Mask is not doing anything. Somebody asked a famous virologist, what do you think about wearing masks? He said, you think people should be wearing masks? So he said, doctors should be wearing masks. Nurse should be wearing masks. Surgeon should be wearing masks. That's it. Why should other people be wearing masks? Professor Raoul, who is a famous scientist in France, was asked by the um, assembly, which is the, like you would say, the parliament, to come and testified. They grilled him with questions for three hours and he answered all the questions. By the way, I just want to know, I want you to know that this professor, um, he, um, he refused to participate in the phony meetings that they had 
um, on the government level and he just said not going because they're all into politics and they're all being bought out and he said I'm a doctor I'm a scientist and I treat patients so he refused to go to Paris to the capital city so the president of France took his private plane and went to see him I mean private whatever his presidential plane and went to see him and had a meeting with him at the lab for three hours still after the professor Raoul explained how he treats his patient and how successful he is it was still not published and admitted in France they beat him and beat him all the journalists were against him and it was very very difficult as I said he even got um, death threat but he continued treating his patients in Marseille where he treats his patients the mortality rate is at the lowest of all of France so nobody is still admitting that he's right in his treatment with hydroxychloroquine but the government purchased 30,000 dosage of hydroxychloroquine for the military it's I'm telling you to do something but I'm doing something else do you like that? A lot of doctors not prescribing hydroxychloroquine, but they're taking it themselves. Did you know that? There's something fishy. I don't have a big website. A lot of people have talked about the situation. Their video have been taken down. That's why I'm bringing this into little pieces, making it a little bit harder. To be taken down. So Professor Raoul was at the um, <clears throat> at the Parliament, answering all the questions from all the deputies for three hours, and they asked him about the mask. And he said clearly, on June twenty fourth, that the confinement. and the wearing of the masks are political decisions that he doesn't understand. He does not understand them. Nothing to do with medicine, nothing to do with science. Again, wearing the mask is a political decision. People want you, some people, and I'm not, I don't care who they are. Every country has their own agendas. Taiwan didn't. They just gave medication to people. They had seven deaths out of 24 million people. If the country has its agenda, and most of them do, they're going to use this virus to pursue their agenda, one way or another. I'll talk to you later about teachers and how they're using this for their agenda. So what is the mask doing? The mask in reality, if you're wearing a mask and you're not wearing it because you don't want to lose your job, and please don't tell me you're doing out of respect for other people. I did that, I'm past it. Because if I respect people as human beings, knowing that they have a brain, they can think, and they can make good decisions. I'm not going to show anything that I appreciate their desire for me to wear a mask. Not. I'm not going to compound the brainwashing. I'm not going to play that game. So if you wear a mask, in reality, for any other reason rather than, you know, you got it, you got to wear it because um, otherwise you get fired. Then I will say that you've been brainwashed. Or I'll be more polite. The person who believes in the mask
is believing in something that has no foundation. None. There's been so many videos. I saw a cute one. It said, my friend, the biologist, can show you. And when you see a video, it talks more than a thousand words. True. So she showed a video, Petri dish, with the, um, with the, the, somebody coughed into it. So she wants to show that if you cough into it without a mask, and if you cough into it with a mask, you get a very different result in the Petri dish. So you see the Petri dish, the lot of bubbles and a lot of things growing in there. I want you to know, this is a picture taken with a camera. And as I explained to you, you cannot see a virus even with a regular microscope. What is that camera doing? What is that growth? Bacteria? Fungus? What does it have to do with a virus? You cannot see a virus. Not even with a regular microscope. What are we being told what you see is a virus? I coughed into it and now the virus propagated. What kind of stupid thing is this? There's another one. Scientific, quote unquote. They took a mannequin and they pumped air out of the mannequin. Okay? So the way they pump air is with a machine, with a pump, right? It's a very strong pump. Now, the stronger the pump, the more power it has, right? And they want to show that if somebody sneezes or somebody cough, can go up to six feet. The little particles coming out of your body can go up to six feet. Did they do that with a human being? Did, did they do that with an old person coughing? Or even an adult coughing? No. They did that with a pump. With a pump. Shall I do it with a gun also? To show how far I can go? And everybody's believing this. This is scientific. Nothing to do with you and me. It has nothing to do with me walking in the street. I'm not a machine. If I tried to cough, I couldn't cough the way that pump is coughing. So a lot of balloons are going around. A lot of people are telling you things. Yes, but I saw it. Yes, but I saw the video. Oh, did you see that video? Did you see that video? The more video you get scared with, the hyper you get. This is the excitement nowadays because you can't go shopping, you can't go into the nightclub, you can't go anything. So that's the excitement. I'm very sorry. You're being lied to and you all bought into it. Not all of you, I know. The one that are listening probably didn't. I'm preaching to the choir. But still, I feel I have to say something, so I will. That's my freedom of speech. This is like my freedom to go around in the street without a mask. Especially when I'm not talking and I'm not sneezing. And I'm not coughing. You know, lice can jump. Lice can jump from one head to another. The virus cannot. If I'm standing next to another person, I cannot contaminate that person just by being next to them. But they want you to think you have to be six feet away from a person or else you're going to catch it. 
And if you catch it, you have 99% chances of having very mild symptoms. Not that I wish it on anyone. I don't wish it on anyone to get sick. But what is more scarier than getting sick is losing your brain. And this is what's happening to people right now. They've lost their brain. They've lost their thinking power. They're believing everything they're being told. So people wearing a mask want to be very nice people. And they say, I'd rather wear a mask. My whole life, my whole life, than thinking that maybe I endangered endanger someone. How long is this going to go? Five years, 10 years, they're willing to do it. They're willing to go around with the mask for the rest of their lives. For something that doesn't help. How pathetic. They are giving themselves more germ from their mask than if they didn't have it. And they're not protecting anybody else. As I said, I educated myself. I read a lot, watched a lot, took classes. And I come with the fact that people are being controlled by fear. So let me tell you how the media works. Media are owned by people. These people have an agenda. If you work for that person who owns the media, you got to say the same story. You have the same narrative because otherwise you lose your job. People who work for the media, newspaper, radio, television, any kind of whatever, you own by someone. If you want to keep your job, you'll be telling the same story. How does the media sell? How do they make money? Because it's a money business. It's also a status like, you know, I own this newspaper or I own this channel or I own this TV things. Okay, it's a status. How do they make money? From advertising and from viewership because the more people view it, the more you can sell the advertising, right? So how do you get people to view your channel or your radio station? There's one thing that sells. It's called bad news. Bad news sell a lot. Do you know when Jack Canfield tried to publish his book, Chicken Soup for the Soul, it was refused by over 400 publishers. Nobody wanted to hear the good stories. They thought it would sell. So the media are there thinking, for good reason, that the best way to sell is to scare people and get them hyper and get them scared because fear is the most powerful emotion. When fear comes in, it blocks the rational part of your brain. You cannot think logically anymore. This is what's happening now. People are so scared that their logic is gone. So medias have to tell you a story that excites you, that makes you scared, that makes you upset, that makes you angry, because then you'll keep on watching and they'll have more viewership and then they'll sell more advertisement and they'll make more money. So Nice stories don't sell, although people need it a lot, a lot more. I highly recommend all the comedy channels. 
that's what I recommend. But the I have an uncle who passed away. He used to be a scientist in the Weizmann Institute. And he told me something one time. He said, Muriel, everybody has a duty. Every patient has a duty to educate themselves. You cannot rely on the doctors. The doctors have a job, but the patient's job is to educate himself. That's the primary duty of a patient. You educate yourself because then you have more knowledge and, and you'll be able to make the right decision for yourself. Doctors know a lot. They cannot know everything. So if you are in the middle of this belief that the virus is deadly, which is proven that it's not, that there is no cure for it, which is proven that there is cure for it, that if you're waiting for a vaccination, let me tell you, HIV virus has been on for over 30 years. So far, there is no vaccination. And people that Dr. Fauci who has been in charge for so many years, is hoping for vaccination now? While we're on the subject of vaccination, yeah, Dr. Fauci should have found a, vaccine, a cure for vaccination against HIV, but he didn't. Right now, there's only medication that are working. No vaccination. What makes you think if for 30 years they didn't find a vaccination for one thing, what makes you think they're going to find it for this one? But right now, money is spent right and left. Eight billion dollars being spent on finding a vaccine for this virus. You don't need it. You don't need it. Most of the vaccinations do not work, or at least are not being proven to work. Some of them are dangerous for people. There's a big controversy on this. But if people wait for a vaccine, It means they've been brainwashed. And I'm saying it plain. I don't care if you don't disagree with me because you can always turn it off. There's no need for vaccination. Now, let me tell you something you might not know about vaccinations. Vaccine. If a company, pharmaceutical company, produce a vaccine, the vaccine doesn't need to be tested. And if the vaccine after it's been approved, after it's been approved, make people sick, you have no recourse to sue the pharmaceutical company that made the vaccine. Manufacturers of vaccines are exempt from any lawsuits. How do you like that? Doctors must be very jealous right now because their medical insurance is very high. Manufacturers of vaccine are exempt from any lawsuit if the vaccine causes death or any kind of illness or handicap or anything. They're exempt. Do you like that? Somebody's going to come up with a vaccine. Some people have already come up with vaccine. Why not? It's a million dollar industry. Big money. Bigger money, and that's why they have big lobbying. Pharmaceutical companies have more lobbying than any other field in Washington. There's a reason why they're making a lot of money. So
So, wearing of the mask. Because as I said, the virus is 200 to a thousand times smaller than the space in between the fiber of your cloth mask or, or any mask you're wearing. The masks primarily are made um, to protect people from bacteria, not virus. So if you think you're doing a favor by wearing a mask, let's have fun. How about wearing a mask so that everything around your nose is coming out? Everything on this side is coming out. Everything is coming out, every single pore of the material. But you're wearing a mask. Some of your own germ gets stuck on it because you're right there. Bacterias, not talking about viruses, I'm talking about your own bacterias. Some of them are wonderful, but some of them are not so great. They should really be coming out of your body, not staying in there, especially if you're wearing your mask day in, day out. I suspect in the next few years, or maybe 10 years, because it takes time until people wake up, there will be lawsuits against businesses that force their employees to wear masks because these people are getting sick without knowing it. By the way, two days ago I went to Ralph and now I'm having a lot of fun because they wanted me to wear a mask and I didn't have one. So they said, you can put your t-shirt on top in front of your face. I said, I'll do that. And then they retracted it. They said, no, that's not good enough. You have to wear a mask. I said, the mask is going to make me choke because so I, I, I've had times, I met so many people that are coughing and coughing. And I say, were well, you wearing a mask? Yes. They're choking on their own bacteria. So I stopped wearing a mask. And certainly if you have a mask, just trash it and throw it away. It's a one-time use, remember? So the, um, the person brings me a mask. So I make sure to put on the mask and letting everything comes out. So basically it's useless. But I think the reason why Ralph, they insisted on me wearing a mask is because Ralph is being sued by someone very smart who decided that since they didn't go anywhere during the confinement except Ralph, they must have gotten, gotten sick with COVID at Ralph. They don't understand that most people who didn't even go out once got sick because that's how it goes. Things go around. You're not living in an aseptic environment. It's impossible. Even surgical room are not aseptic. So what I'm saying is, um, now Ralph is being sued and I am going to have a lot of good time seeing the same people that are telling the employees and their um, 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 shoppers to wear a mask and making sure that the lawyers bring all the data why, why it's impossible to be protected. <laughs> from the virus. I'm going to enjoy seeing lawyers racking up all the numbers from all the studies and all the data showing that it's irrelevant what you do. The virus is going around. I'm going to really enjoy the lawyers doing the exact opposite of what Ralph is asking you to do right now. It's going to be fun. <laughs>